Hey guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So, just let the light adjust there. Um, today is going to be a short video. Is it? I'm not sure. Whenever I say that, it ends up really long. So, we're going to make up a fry basket for a certain purpose. We're going to silicon that pipe that we messed up yesterday. We've also got some sandpaper, sandpaper to arrows up the pipe. Aris is the wrong word. Um, and first up, what we're going to do, we're going to do an underwater Sudi Grunter live feeding. I'm not sure what I'm going to feed it yet, but let's take the camera and we'll go underwater, hey? I might, I'm going to do that first because I think that's going to be the most exciting part of the video. And for those of you who only watched the first five minutes, um, this one's for you. Alright guys, so the CD was a bit of a fail, so we're going to go with the Bokka Chromis instead. <laughs> Uh, sorry about that. Um, I was a little bit disappointed by the Bokka Chromis. Normally they're more feisty. Maybe it's the fact that I was like waving a camera in their face. I think like because I had it in the water. I think it kind of uh, spooked, spooked them out a little bit to the point they weren't grabbing the fish. Normally with the Bokkos, if I drop a fish in there, they grab the fish before it even hits the bloody water. But um... I don't want to keep trying because um, I was feeding them flower horns and then they weren't necessarily culls because I haven't <laughs> actually selected them yet. I was just grabbing random ones. So, um, sorry guys, <laughs> There's a, we're missing a few now. Um, yeah, so the problem is in the IBC, they don't color up so you can't tell what sort of scripting there is to to selectively cull, which brings us to the next point in this video. Alright, so we're going to make a grey floating basket to put flower horns in to see if they show their script being in a dark basket. So I'm hoping I can just click my fingers and the, it'll become a floating basket. So you ready? Three, two, one, bam! We've got a basket with styrofoam on each end ready to float. I haven't decide, decided whether I'm going to float it in the pond or in the in the IBC, but I think the basket's going to make its own decision for me. Oh, hang on. I take that back. It fits. I didn't think it was going to fit in that hole. Um, I think I'm going to put it in the pond, guys. This is a controlled experiment and we currently have the fish in that white basket in the middle there, the one with the most light in it. So those are the fish that we're experimenting with so we'll keep them in the wa that water, that's our constant 
medium or whatever it's called. All right, let's get them in there. All right, guys, if you look at these now, some of them starting to show red, but can you see they've got no script? That's because of the white basket. And then, what what's going on here? That's not a flower horn. That's an Alunacara. Um, they can stay with them, I guess. Anyway, so now they're going in here. Um, and there's a couple here. Hang on. This one's like fine to the fish and amongst the blue plastic. Um, I don't remember why. I was like dumping them in there for some reason. Uh, the plastic that is. I didn't. I don't think I really meant to disguise the fish. I think these two can go in the IBC. They're quite small. Hopefully, there's no more in there. I'll leave that in the water anyway. There was no fry left in that basket. And I've got the string line out. I seem to be going through a fair bit of this string line lately. Um, I can see a flower horn in the tank. So we've dropped one at some stage. Unless this is one of the ones I tried to feed to the Sudi. I think that's more likely. I don't know. Everyone always tells me flower horns don't jump and I've had quite a few jumps so I ignore that advice from people. Um, I'm not saying they're wrong in their experiences but in my experiences flower horns do jump. Look at that, I did a knot that is undoable. We didn't do the double knot this time. So the reason for that is because our drain pipe for our pond is over there and the containers just go straight into it. So look, we'll check on that tomorrow and we'll see how it's looking. So you may be wondering why I'm investigating this. So it, it, if you look at this fish here, this is a flower horn. Can you see how it's starting to get the script in the side of it. That that flower horn there was in the white tub 24 hours ago. So that black has shown up in the last 24 hours. So by going to a dark tub, I'm hoping that the script will start to show up. So you might be thinking, why am I doing that when I've got some beautiful IBCs over here with fish growing it, with the flower horns going out. So what my plan is here, we can just scoop up a batch of, a group of like 10 of these at a time, put them in the um, gray basket, and then look at the coloring when they're in the gray basket and start to cull. That way I can cull without putting them in a tank for selection, if that makes sense. Um, that's my plan anyway. I don't know if it's going to work, but time will tell. I said this is going to be a short video and it's already dragging on. Anyway, I'm going to repair this pipe and we'll make this little segment as short as possible because this, now this short vlog is turning into a long one as per usual. So a sales rep from a, a certain company, I actually can't even remember which company it was, gave us this tube at work. It's a uh, Selly Storm Sealant waterproof seal on any material, wet or dry. Now, I'm hoping that after 24 hours, this pipe is dry. Uh, doesn't look like it. It's wet down the bottom there. Um, Alright, so apparently this is dripping in there for some odd reason.
I reckon we just send it, guys. Let's load it up. Duh. Um, just got a bit of 80 grit sandpaper here. And we'll do the pipe as well. I've dried it off with my shirt. I took my shirt off. But there's still water there. This says it can be used on wet or dry material. I guess we're going to test that theory out. Um, I've got acetone I can wipe it with, but the problem is every time I bump it, more water comes out. So part of, so I really just want to send it. Hmm. Yeah, screw it. Let's send it. That's. We'll just wait like a minute from now and not knock it at all. That breeze is blowing through. That's feeling pretty dry right now. All right, I'll be back in a minute, guys. I'm just going to leave it to dry without touching it. All right, so you guys are mounted in bush camera. No tripod needed, just dig your camera into the ground. Alright, so I loaded it up guys. I've got no idea whether it's going to hold. I tried to like thumb it out, get quite a bit of coverage on the actual pipe itself. And I put some up here to try to stop that from ever moving. Um, when I'm in, if I'm ever working on this pipe inside, I'm going to have to be conscious of not trying not to move it too much. Now I kind of explained this yesterday guys, but if that pipe leaks, it's not the end of the world. It does mean a little bit less water for my water change system. So if it was going to be a huge issue, I would probably look at putting like a rubber seal around it or something. But the fact that it's just like a drain pipe, I don't really care whether it leaks or not. All right, on that note guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to hit like if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.